Welcome to the um, to Everyday Moodling's blog. This is our first um, product inspiration challenge for 2015. Uh, this week we are focusing on wood. so wood has become super super popular. Uh, not only do you have like a ton of these wood veneers. Sorry. Oh gosh, if you watch December, um, then uh, then you know I changed my video setup. So, still kind of learning the ropes there. So hopefully I won't have too many flub ups. Um, so these little wooden veneer pieces are everywhere. It seems like every pattern paper pack has wood. This is a Christmas one um, from Kaiser Craft. And it has a number of wood sheets in them, um, down to actual wood paper. Although, you know, that's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? Because all paper is, in fact, wood. But this is um, actually feels like real wood. It is adhesive backed, it's a very thin sheet of wood. There's no um, coating on it, so you could, you know, do stamping and things like that directly on it. Uh, this is made by Artcraft. It comes in a number of different sheets of uh, colors. It, there's just one sheet in here, so uh, it's a little expensive, but you can do some fun things with it. Um, so just, you know, more of an accent than something I would do for, like, the background of a scrapbook page. More for accent pieces. I got it at Joann's. I'm sure there are obviously are other options for purchasing it. So, um, and then of course there are tons and tons and tons of wood shapes to alter. Uh, there's always been a lot of these at stores, but it seems like recently there's just been so much more. And Kaiser Craft, that same company, has um, a line of I think it's called Off the Page products. Just all kinds of different products that you can alter um, with your paper crafting uh, pr products. So a lot of good options there. We're going to do a couple of videos today. One is our subscription only video and we're going to be working with this sheet um, in that video. We're going to do a fun little card uh, and make some cute medallions with this wood. Uh, the other one which will be available to everyone on our blog is working with this little flower pot set. Um, some of them have already started altering, so we have one left. Let me turn it up. I'm working a bit handicapped today. Uh, I don't know how much you'll see it in the videos, but I unfortunately have broken my arm. This is uh, <laughs> the third time, so I can't put much weight on it so I'm just gonna have to show them to you like this so you can see the sides this one already has the sand in it so um, where where am I going with this flower pot set let me give you some background here uh, if you have been around uh, my website or blog for a while, then you've heard me talk about an inspiration flower pot set. And I have put the original picture of that flower pot set on my on the blog. And down below, you'll see a URL for the blog. Plus, it's in the blog description, so you can go ahead and hop on over to the blog and see what that original set was. It was cute little ceramic ones. And what I did is I made a bunch of these little um, flower uh, markers, basically, and I'll show you how I make these. They're really cute and super simple. Uh, and then I put them in here. And what these are, if you could see that, that one says stickers on it, is when you have a large amount of products, and I'm sure many of you experience this, it's often hard to remember what you have. In fact, I just recently am doing a bit of a purge and so I ran across some things that I had forgotten about. And uh, unless you have some way to remember them, what happens is that you end up looking through all your supplies every, anytime you want to do a project. Well, I don't have that kind of time. And so one of the things I am fond of doing is to create reminders for myself of the things I have. And that is what the original flower pot set did. 
the first or uh, one of the flower pots has consumables like stickers. Uh, one of them has tools and techniques like maybe the Cricut or maybe uh, dry embossing or heat embossing. And then the last one is kind of a mix of the two. So things that do get consumed but take more than one or two uses. So we're going to use a stain today. That is something that would fall into that category. Obviously at some point this bottle will get empty, but I can use it on multiple um, uses or multiple projects under like a, unlike a sticker or a die cut or a piece of paper or a flower that's a one-time use so that's how I divided them up on the blog you'll see a full list of each what I put in each one so we're gonna go ahead I'm going to show you how to how I finished these how I did the flowers and just some additional tips and ideas for setting it up. I'm going to put these uh, rest of this wood off to the side and we will get started with our final flower pot. Okay, let's, uh, let's get started on this altered wood piece. Now, I knew ahead of time that I wanted to stain it, but I wasn't quite sure what color. So actually this is the bottom of my flower pot tray to test out different colors. And the win winner ended up being this Weathered Wood um, by Tim Holtz Distress Stain. It just gave me the kind of the look that I was looking for. So I may go ahead and cover the bottom eventually, but I'm not really ever going to see it, so I wasn't too worried about it. What else are you going to need? Obviously you're going to need, you could use paint. Um, you could leave it plain if you wanted to and just seal it afterwards. But you're, if you're going to use stain, you're going to need some stain. Uh, I found paint brushes work the best, and I'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to pop off the top of the stain because it's easier to get at it with a paintbrush that way. So you're going to need a bowl for that. The opening is a little small, so this paintbrush, which worked the best, didn't really fit in there. So I'm going to seal mine, and so you're going to need something to seal it. I'm using a Mod Podge. This is their antique. Actually, I'll probably test this out a little bit on the bottom to see whether or not I like the original or the antique um, Mod Podge. But you want to kind of seal it up. That'll make sure your paper stays on really good to that wood. You're obviously going to need some paper. Now, uh, I'm sure most of you do not recognize this paper. When I first started scrapbooking, which I think was in 2000, because I felt like it was a good time to start doing something with my pictures at the dawn of a new century. So, um, at that time there weren't a whole lot of supplies, mostly creative memories, but I, um, at that point, had not really been introduced to that product line. So I went to Michael's, and one of the few papers they have that wasn't themed was from a, a company called Keeping Memories Alive, which is kind of still around just a little bit. I think they only sell albums. They used to be really, really, really big, really popular. Um, and I still have a lot of that, orig some of that original paper that they sold, mostly because it's just so generic. And uh, I'm actually kind of happy I kept it now because it suits the t style of scrapbooking I'm going to be going back to. I just like the generic look of it and the colors that they use. So. Eventually I'll run, run out of the paper, but it was one that I never got rid of. So we're going to use purple on our last one. What else are you going to need? You're going to need some popsicle sticks. You're going to need something to fill up your flower pots. I chose this sand. And before I forget, okay, I do not spend a lot of time. There's one other thing I want to show you in the floral department of a craft store. Uh, oh, sorry, I shook the camera there a little bit. Uh, I do not do floral arrangements, so I don't spend a lot of time there. But when I went to get the sand, I found these this big, huge bag of, they're called moon drops, and they are exactly like the little dew drops that you buy in the tiny, tiny, tiny little jar. And this, I think, has like 500 in here, or it's, or it's by volume. So uh, I sure, I'm sure there's a lot more than what's in that little bottle. 
and they can be colored, although I kind of like to use them clear. So um, you might want to, if you didn't already know this, you can buy these little pieces in the floral department. So that, that was a good extra little find when I picked this stuff up. So, and then obviously you're going to need some paper for your flowers and some stamps. Now I hand write my topics on there. Gosh, you could print them out from the computer. You can stamp them all. But I kind of like the handwritten um, option. And so um, then we stamp circles on them. And this, this stamp is by Seven Gypsies. And you can see they're not stamped all that well, but in the hour of my need, I got my son to stamp and punch them all. So, um, they're not perfect, but that's okay. When I look at them, it reminds me that he was willing to help me when I needed it. So, and then I also have some flower punches or scallop circles, however you want to look at that, that will go behind. Real simple. So, and that's real easy to do. Obviously, we're just going to put a little bit of adhesive here. You're going to write it on, right on here, or stamp on there what the topic is. And for my flower pots, that can be anything. Uh, there's a few things I don't put on because, gosh, I use them all the time, so I don't need to know, remind myself to use brads or ribbon um, or ink, really. I do that all the time. Some ink. Now, I might put alcohol ink on there because... I don't use alcohol ink very often, I forget I have it. So those are things that would go on here. So when I initially made my list, what I recommend that you do is really go through your space and look at all the things that you have that you might not be using very often or that you forget. And that's where you start your list from. Sometimes I'll put specific paper brands, sometimes just a certain style of paper, it really just depends. And then, once it's all done, what I do is on a project that I may be working on, I might pull out at random a couple of flower pots or our flower sticks, or I might look specifically at, oh, what could I use for this particular project and pull those out um, and put it with everything else that I'm going to use to make that project. So those are my basic flowers. I have a lot to complete and light right on. But we're going to finish this pot over here. I'll show you how we do that. I did not sand mine because I really didn't care whether or not I had a nice smooth surface. So all you're going to do really is just paint. It's easy to do. So because mine isn't sanded, it's pretty rough, but that's fine with me. And because these are not like top quality pieces of wood, you may know, notice some variations in how it accepts the stain. Sometimes there's extra adhesive on it. Now you'll notice I'm skipping the center. That's because it's going to be covered up by paper and so why bother? So we're going to work our way around here. I'm going to speed up the film a little bit to finish up this part. and. Now, I, there obviously is an applicator here, but it's pretty hard to get into the little creases with it or inside here, so I just popped it off. It just pops right off and put a little in the bowl. You'll also notice I only went down so far um, with the stain, and that's because the rest is covered by the sand, so why waste product? So, now... I did not wait for it to dry completely on any of my flower pots, but you can if you want to. You can let it dry now. But we're going to go ahead and cover it with paper. So, um, to make my lines, I'm going to just hold this in place because I'm using the pot itself to measure. And you're going to need a pencil. And basically, you're just going to trace this line. On either both sides 
it'll pop right back off. Now, there's a couple of ways you could cut this. My normal method or my usual method is to use a steel ruler, cork back, and a X-Acto knife. But I tried doing that and gosh, that kind of hurt my arm. So, because you gotta put pressure on the ruler. So I'm gonna, just gonna use my paper cutter. This particular one has a little guide metal thread almost to where uh, the cut's gonna be. I really like that. So you're gonna go in from the pencil line about a quarter of an inch, or, or you can do an eighth of an inch, depending on how much of the wood you want to e expose. And I truly am eyeballing it, so it's probably somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. And then we're gonna put some adhesive on it. Now, um, you could also use Mod Podge to adhere it down as well. Since I'm going back over this, I'm not too concerned about whether or not it's completely adhered because I'll, I'll finish that process when I put Mod Podge on it. And that's what it looks like. I really like that purple color. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video and finish the other three sides and then I'll be back to kind of finish. Because my wood's wet, the paper wants to pull away from it just a little bit. So uh, if you don't want to worry about that, just go ahead and let it dry. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to mod podge these so um, it'll be nicely sealed. Now I may put some trim around the top. I haven't really decided yet. I'm going to have to see what that looks like. But at the end of the day, there will be finished pictures on the blog. Again, the blog address is with the video. Uh, and, uh, of course, you may wonder what happened to the original flower pot set since, you know, every, I really liked it. They were cute. Uh, during, um, not my last move, but the move before, my sister came down to help and she broke one of them. So I really couldn't be too upset considering she flew from Milwaukee to um, Texas to help me move. I will take that kind of help. So I needed to come up with a new one. Um, I did try some other options for reminding myself of what I had, but I found this was the best option. Plus they look so darn cute sitting in my uh, studio so I wanted to go back to that like I said I'll have pictures on my blog of the finished set as well as a list of all of my flowers but truly um, it's got to be what's in your craft room not what's in mine but hopefully it'll give you an idea of some of the things that I included uh, and they'll be kind of um, a pro little bit more about the process but basically if I if I want the reminder then when I start a project I might look or I might choose them randomly choosing them randomly really kind of pushes my creativity so uh, that's a nice little boost particularly for a project like an art journaling page or tag art or or a card where I'm not really dictated by uh, a photo or a memory Scrapbooking is a little bit harder to do that with, so then I might just choose some flowers based upon the project that I'm doing or the page that I'm doing. So that because the the type of layout and the pictures really dictate sometimes what I'll be using. So either way, really helps to remember all the things I have stuffed away in drawers. 
Uh, I know many of my students uh, have that same kind of issue of you put it away and you forget about it. And that's normal because we have so much to choose from. So this is a way to keep those things fresh in your mind. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you want to see what I do with that wood veneer sheet, um, go ahead and sign up to get our subscription only uh, videos because that will go out that'll go out tomorrow in, uh, via email. So if you want to see that, go ahead and sign. You can see the finished product on the blog, uh, but if you want to see the process I used to create it then sign up to get our subscription uh, videos. Otherwise, we'll see you next week with a brand new uh, theme and new inspirations and projects. Thank you for visiting the Everyday Moodle Links blog. I'm Drew Parks, and I'll see you next week.